often when I go into museums to um, investigate their collections of Bronze Age textiles, sometimes you, you'll have a tub maybe this size and that's the full collection. Whereas at Must Farm there are four big boxes full of finds of the fibre and fabric, fabric assemblage. So just in terms of quantity, it's an, an absolutely um, amazing uh, assemblage to um, to have for the Bronze Age and, and a basis to really revise what we understand about Bronze Age fibres and fabrics. So there's just having so much more has all sorts of implications. Um, not only that, but in the late Bronze Age, a lot of the um, a very small number, I must emphasise, of, of that very small number of other of other sites with preserved um, fabrics. These uh, are mostly very small pieces of textile and these are found um, quite often in hordes or um, uh, so if for the early Bronze Age in burials. These are very different contexts. Whereas at Must Farm we've got a living area and so it's not just the finished product that we're finding so something someone put into a burial or wrapped around a hoard of weapons um, which is also fascinating but to find something in a settlement area um, as at Must Farm brings a different perspective because we don't just have the finished products but we also have the objects as they were being made so we have bundles of processed fibre for example we've got balls of yarn and that's really unique and and that's uh, not just because there's a lot of it but also just through the category of finds that really helps to bring a different understanding of the of this process of, of making the fabrics in the bronze age so my colleague uh, dr margarita glaber has been working on the fiber identification of the, the fiber and fabric assemblage from Must Farm. And she's identified three, three different types of bast fibers so far at Must Farm. She's identified um, lime bast fibers. So um, fibers coming from under the, the bark of the lime tree. Um, she's identified um, bast fibers from the flax plant and these, when they're extracted from the flax plant, we talk about those then as linen. Um, so um, our, our linen textiles. And at Must Farm, the textiles that so far have been looked at have been made out of, of linen. The other maybe more surprising result um, that my colleague Dr. Glaber's um, found so far is that some of the bass fibres comes from a nettle taxon. Um, so something something like the the nettle that we've looked at, um, and these this identification is coming from a number of finds of the where the yarn is wound onto sticks. And this is uh, at the moment this research is still ongoing, and um, my colleagues have been looking at, across the fens at different plants um, as reference materials, so different modern examples of plants to to take as comparison to then uh, be able to make these identifications. And uh, my colleague is hoping to narrow down that identification somewhat more. So in the Bronze Age in the British Isles, we know that there are, there are textiles uh, made from both bast fibers, plant fibers, and also wool fibers. So the question is really, why don't we find wool fibers at Must Farm? Because so far, everything we've looked at is from plant fibers. This is, this is down to uh, a couple of reasons. In archaeology, we always have to think about what we talk of as the taphonomy, the, this process of, of deposition and decay, um, and how that alters what we find um, in the archaeological evidence. And with um, textiles, of course, these are very prone to decay. Um, if you put something outside on your compost heap made from natural fibres, it'll disappear uh, quite quickly. Um, but there are certain reasons why things might then be preserved or, or, or decay very fast. And part of this is the soil matrix, so the soil that surrounds those materials. 
And in um, certain different environments and di different soil matrix environments, sometimes that will be more conducive to the preservation of plant fibres and sometimes more conducive to the preservation of animal-based fibres and, and products. And, and there's a chemical distinction there. So soils that are slightly alkali are more conducive to preserving plant fibres, whereas slightly acidic soils are more conducive to preserving um, animal uh, fibres, these protein fibres. So at Must Farm, the preservation, preservation conditions are preferable towards the, the plant fibres remaining. But on top of that is that Must Farm burnt down. And so we have an environment that's also charred. So when the all many of the finds, the different uh, materials, the wood, the pottery, you know, they they suffered from burning, slight charring, and the the fibre and fabric assemblage of Must Farm was also part of that burning experience. So some of these um, will have have charred uh, lightly before they then drop down in the fire as everything decomposed into the to the water, and that charring is also a reason that the wool fibres wouldn't have been preserved because when um, when wool fibres are heated up, burn, they they collapse, they shrink, um, and they will. Uh, they decay, they, they turn to, to nothing very quickly. Whereas that's different for the plant fibres, they can char and sort of hold their shape. And so if you, if you think of maybe charcoal burning, um, that they're under a controlled environment, people will carefully char um, twigs to make charcoal or, or sticks to make charcoal. You know, there, that, that's created, preserving that form of the wood. Well, this is the sort of process that we believe was happening to the um, plant fibres. All of the fibre and fabric assemblage from Must Farm is black. So it's all completely black and that's due to this preservation environment. Whatever these complex processes of, um, of, of charring and decay were. So that means that we don't, uh, we can't visually look at the material and understand the, the colour of it um, because it is all black and I've looked very carefully and it is definitely all black. Um, so, so in that way they're visually transformed. Um, but, but actually the process of charring, you know, dip or, or these processes of, of um, decay and, uh, and preservation have been favourable at Must Farm, and that's why we have this wonderful assemblage. And so, although it's changed colour, there's a lot of um, still the the shapes of the ob of some of the objects are preserved, and um, and also you know that's something that's visible to the eye, but also microscopically, depending on the technique that you use, that the the artifacts can also be looked at. And so, for example. In the fibre identification, looking at very high mag magnification, those those shapes of the, of the cells remain to be able to identify the species. <laughs>